so uh, if you remember in uh, grade uh, 9 also we had uh, uh, one chapter on uh, forest and wildlife resources you remember hmm okay yes, ah, all right so here we are uh, that was mostly a physical uh, geography now we are going to have the human geography or you can say a little bit uh, uh, this thing uh, natural also so this is this is one uh, narak my lord you are the creator of music and the world of this is the thing right the first first line says yes sir mm, okay okay so uh, this is about the biodiversity in India because see if you talk about let's say India then you see that from north to south we have huge diversity what you studied in grade 9 and east to west also we have huge physical and geographical diversity throughout the world and as we know that uh, uh, because of geographical diversity we have a diversity in flora and fauna also okay and these are also resources because the forest is one of the greatest resources uh the humankind have right and uh, you can say similarly the animals also so this is about that uh, uh, that topic so it says we share this planet with millions of other living beings uh, starting from the microorganism and bacteria the lichens and the the banyan trees elephants and blue whales everything that is from the small to big we all we have this entire habitat that we live in it has immense biodiversity we humans along with all living organism form a complex wave of ecological system in which we are only the part of the very much dependent on this system for our own existence so that means that uh, see this uh, forget about the the first two lines but here the second third line says we humans along with all living organism form a complex wave of ecological system in which we are only the part and very much dependent on this system for our own existence that means if we don't have those natural resources like the forest and other animals and microorganism we cannot survive that's important here okay so you have studied the same thing in biology also all right so uh, this is the interdependence of the human being and the you can say or the other organism for example the plants animals and microorganism recreate the quality of the air we breathe we have already studied and know about it the water we drink and the soil that produce our food without which we cannot survive naturally because that these are the these are the you can say the most important basis of life or you can say the basics of life is are these these things like air soil and water so the forests play a key role in ecological system as these are the only primary producers on which other living thing depend so see the plants are the primary producer you have studied in uh, food chain in in science okay so they are the, the the primary producers and the animals and we, we are the secondary uh, and you can say tertiary producers okay so that so where one one question comes that what is meant by primary producers okay so you can simply write that primary producers are the producers which do not depend on uh, any other organism or any other things to to produce their own food so that is called primary producers okay now here question says second is biodiversity and biological diversity is immensely rich or uh, immensely uh, rich in wildlife and cultivated species diverse in form and function but closely integrated in a system through multiple network of interdependencies so here you can say you can understand uh, you can try to understand the food chain system okay so in the food chain system the primary producers are there then predators are there the preys are there and all these things are there okay so uh, in that you say that they are diverse in form and functions because every organism has its own function right and every organism has its own role to play in the system right okay and uh, in that case uh, it's very quite complicated to understand but you have to understand that we all depend on each other so that is called interdependence of human being or other organism with us okay so next uh, paragraph says the flora and fauna in india so uh, this is uh, the another topic so if you look around you will be able to find that there are some animals and plants which are unique in your area why this happens why are they unique because of the geographical conditions okay not all the animals are found everywhere okay like elephants are not found in japan right have you seen elephants in japan uh, except jews uh, have you seen uh, elephants in the zoo here 
Yes. Which which uh, zoo did you see? Fujisan. Okay, 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 Fujisan, that one. Okay, I saw elephant in uh, even a uh, zoo. Okay, so yeah, so that you can say that in in Japan we don't have uh, you can say in in elephants, right? Or other animals like panda. Panda is only found in in China, right? And other like tigers, tigers are tigers and lions are found in India. So not uh, India is the only country where tigers and lions both are found. In fact, India is one of the world richest countries in terms of its vast array of biological diversity. This is possibly twice or thrice the number yet to be discovered. That means, see, just try to understand this: that we have only thirty percent of land with us, seventy percent is underwater, and we have not we have not yet discovered all the species of this thirty percent of this planet. Right? Forget about the seventy percent, which is underwater, which is highly inaccessible. All right. So there, I, we don't know that what kind of and what number of uh, different species we have, which we have not discovered yet. Okay. Or and of course they also play their role in in this nature. So in fact, okay. So it says this is possibly twice or thrice the number yet to be discovered. You have already studied in detail about the extent and variety of forest and wildlife resources in India. You may have re realized the importance of these resources in our daily life, of course, because. You know that flora and fauna for medicines, for various other products, the byproducts, right? Those things are important in our daily life. Now we we depend on a lot of medicines. That means the modern medicines. Earlier we we when we did not have medicines, th these flora were very important for us. All the plants and the medicinal herbs and other things were very important for our you can say uh, medicinal life or you can say Ayurveda was based on these things. Okay, one of the ancient uh, books. Of India, so these diverse flora and fauna are so well integrated in our daily life that we take these for granted. That means we don't we don't care for much. We just consider that this is just for you know we do not know the complexity of those things. But lately, there are under great they are under great stress mainly due to the insensitivity or uh, to our environment because because of the rising population, we are clearing our forest, we are polluting a lot, and because of that, what is happening? That these uh, this diversity is in danger because uh, the the other species are either extinct extinct or they are you can say in danger. Okay, so those things are there. Further, it says find out the storage priority or region. Leave it. So next paragraph says some estimates suggest that at least ten percent of India's recorded wild flora and twenty percent of this uh, of its mammals are on the threatened list. See the sparrows. Sparrows you will not see in India now, mostly. Okay, if you talk about uh, the cities, okay, in rural areas or you can say in the hilly area you can still find, but no, vultures are completely gone. You can say we don't find vultures in our 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 cities or in our villages because they are gone. I tell you why. Because vultures are basically scavengers, so they they feed on the dead animals, right? Mostly what happened. Uh, what what I have studied and I have seen that uh, to milk cow or you can say the buffaloes uh, when the child die or if the calf dies, what we do is that we inject a medicine in the neck of the 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 cow or you can say the buffalo, and within five or two minutes the cow is ready to 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 milk or give milk. So in that case, every day that chemical which is injected in their neck or you can say in the body. Morning and evening that makes it highly, you can say, toxic, right? Unfortunately, we did not understand that the same milk we are also drinking and we are consuming, so that chemical is passed on to our body also. For, forget about us; we are the the most idiotic and stupid uh, species on this planet. But uh, uh, when those animals died, the cows and buffaloes, right? They were eaten by you can say uh, the vultures. And eventually, what happened? Vultures also died. Okay, I remember uh, around 30 years ago, we had a lot of vulture in our cities. Like I, I am from Bihar. Okay, so in Patna and all, we used to see a lot of vultures. Now we don't see even a single one. All died because of this this condition, right? So you can understand that how insensitive, or you can say how because of the lack of awareness. Okay, we lost that bird. Okay, and it used to be a huge bird. That means one vulture might be, you can say, around five to six kg of weight, right? So they 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 used to be so so big, right? Completely gone. 
so many are uh, in the threatened list many of these would now be categorized as critical that is on the verge of extinction like the cheetah the pink headed duck the mountain quail forest spotted owlet and the plants like mahua mahua is uh, is, is written madhuka uh, something is there uh, it's written in bracket mahua and uh, this one mahua is uh, you know uh, a flower basically it's a yellow uh, cream color flower and uh, we pluck it uh, or you can say it uh, it uh, falls down on the on the soil and then we when we and that then we pick up those things and we dry in the sun okay and after that it has so much of sweet or you can say sugar that if you eat that mahua you can say after after drying it okay uh, let's say 100 gram or something you don't feel uh, hungry because it is full of uh, a lot of minerals vitamins okay and uh, sugar also so it used to be so good now it's almost gone okay so i i in my village i had one mahua uh, tree okay but now that is also gone because of the you know um, modernization we just lost it and uh, i hardly see mahua tree in my village so that gone so these are some of the things which i have experienced you might have not experienced number one plus that you since you live in japan so in that case of course some of the things you don't notice because you don't belong to the rural background and all but of course these things can be realized so mahua is one of them i told you the vulture another one and some of the 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 animals or the birds are written here so remember at least two three names cheetah of course pink so are vultures extinct in india not exactly but yes you can say they are in threatened list or endangered endangered okay they might be found in let's say in the forest and all okay, but uh, in the cities or you can say they used to be the part of our daily system because you know the in the villages of course animals are there animals die okay and these these vultures feed on them so they, there was a system you can say their connection was there now we don't find that connection because it's gone right so that so earlier what used to happen that uh, when the animal uh, died let's say uh, the some people used to peel out the skin of that animal that means the for tannery or you can say the leather work rest of the body that means the flesh and all the things were left open in the in the field or you can say in any isolated area and there the vulture used to come and within two three days they used to finish the work right so this is how they were they were uh, cleaning uh, they they became a cleaning agent for the society they were like that but now since they are gone still we have the animals right so it becomes very difficult to 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 decompose that body or you can say to to get rid of that so what we have started doing is that we have started burying them okay dig soil okay of that size or more than that and you just bury the the animal because vultures are gone who is going to take care of that okay so it was it was a uh, you can say an automatic system which we we snapped which we we snapped so that's uh, you can see the we we broke the link we broke the link between uh, in the society so today we know we only talk of the larger and more visible animals and plants that have become extinct but what about the smaller animals like insects and plants so you can see that uh, many small insects and plants died because of the you can say the insecticides or pesticides what we use in our farms right or for let's say uh, for our houses we use a lot of insecticides and pesticides and the chemicals what we use in uh, our daily life those those also had its implication on on the extinction of these small uh, you can say organism which we don't see or which we don't realize that has happened okay now at the next page uh, that says vanishing forest you have to uh, remember the data here a little bit so the dimension of deforestation in india are staggering the forests and trees cover in the country is estimated at you can say 807276 square kilometers okay which uh, uh, which is 24.56% of the total geographical uh, area 
uh, of India. So that's you can say good. So you see, uh, let me tell you that uh, when we were a student, we used to study that only 19% of uh, forest is left in India, right? But because of the awareness, because of the, the ecological concerns, again, we started reforesting and our forestation took place, uh, you know, at a wide scale. Uh, that means the schools used to stage a program for a forestation and the government also encouraged a lot. And because of that, we have reached to this place. For any ideal country, 33% of the geographical area should be under forest. In Japan, you know how much is this? That one? 66%. Okay, 66 plus, 66% plus, plus we have forest in Japan. That's why you can see Japan is always clean. Okay, no pollution. Of course, other things are also important here. But uh, we can say that being an archipelago in the Pacific Ocean, that also creates its own uh, system because of the strong wind. It was it blows away the 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 what do you say the pollution and other things. But of course, so in Japan we have more than sixty six percent area under forest. Uh, in, in India, it is for 24.56, so you can say roughly 25% area is under forest, okay. And uh, according to the state of forest report, the dense forest cover has increased by 3,976 square kilometers since 2017. So you can see that it has increased, that means we are now more concerned. I tell you, in many states or in all over India, if government starts any development program, let's say highways or expressways or railways or any other thing, government has to take permission from NGT. NGT means National Green Tribunal. That is also a government body, but you see it is an independent body. So until and unless this NGT gives clearance, okay, government cannot start any development project. They ask a full, you can say, detailed description or you can say report that how many forest, how many trees are being cut for this this uh, this project, right? How are you going to compensate that? And if animals and other things are also involved in that, are, give me the the. Okay, so if animals and other things are also involved in this, in that case, what happens? That there is a big no from tribunal, right? NGT. So this is how we started, you know, and uh, any project, where whatever takes place, let's say if you have Delhi Mumbai highway or expressway or anything, you have to take permission from the NGT after acquiring land and all these things. Okay, that's important here. So because of those efforts and our awareness and our sensitivity towards the, the system or you can say the losses what we have suffered, uh, you can say that uh, the forest cover, dense forest cover has increased right and government does not allow you to cut any tree all right even i i suspect that if you have your own tree in your backyard or something you may not be allowed to cut that one without government permission so this is also one thing so you have to take permission from the government so government has become so strict about it okay and because of that the green cover has increased that's good okay so how however this apparent increase in the forest cover is due to the conservation measures management interventions and the plantation etc by the different agencies so we have variety of agencies like one of them one of those uh, i told you is uh, is ngt right and the state has its own uh, you can say agencies to protect environment and uh, greeneries and because of that we are able to save at least or we are able to uh, manage 25 percent around 25 percent all right now it says, let us now understand the different categories of existing plants and animal species based on the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, IEUCN. Please remember this uh, abbreviation, IEUCN, I for International, U for Union, and C for Conservation, and N for natural and Nature and Natural Resources. It can classify the, uh, as follows, normal species, endangered species, and then it says, uh, uh vulnerable species rare species and uh, endemic species and extinct species so there are you can say one two uh three four five six six categories have been uh, categorized or classification has been done by uh, iucn and uh, it says everything is uh, one or two are okay but others are a little confusing so we have to be be clear and uh, we have to find out an hairline difference between uh, the others so normal species, the quite normal species whose population levels are considered to be normal for their survival, such as cattle, sal, pine, rodents, etc. They are very common. So those are the normal species. Okay. 
and rodents and all these things we of course we don't want right but of course they are the natural uh, player in this environment so they are important okay next is endangered species these are the species which are in danger of extinction that means they can be uh, extinct uh, if we do not take care the survival of such species is difficult if the negative factor that have led to the decline in their population continue to operate so if we keep continuing like this or if you keep doing these stupid and idiotic activities what we are doing because of industrialization modernization okay cutting the forest for more more you can say what do you say more uh, urbanization these things will happen today what happened whenever we have money let's say uh, we buy land in india and those are the agricultural land and why do we buy to make our own houses or construct our own houses and all these things but we don't think that uh, houses are okay but what about that agricultural land on which this la this uh, house is uh, built on okay once upon a time it was it was producing food for us now we have our house on that so in that case what will have the arable area or arable land will be less and less okay year by year or in that case how are we going to feed this 1.4 billion population right that's important here so uh, this is one thing some people say that if we don't uh, uh, if we don't uh, cultivate much land that's good why because india is facing so we should import food we should import food what is the logic uh, they say that india is uh, an agricultural country fine right and india is a country where water scarcity is going to uh, happen and it's already happening and food production consumes more than 60 percent of water so when we produce food we are consuming 60 percent of our fresh water also and where is water in india now so in that case and most importantly when we export that food we are not only exporting the food we are exporting the water also you remember when you were in grade 7 i told, told you or taught you about the virtual water that means the amount of water directly or indirectly consumed to produce certain things like one a pair of jeans pant takes around 700 liters of water a bed sheet takes around same same amount of water okay a chicken takes around an egg takes around uh, 300 liters of water a beef takes more than 100000 liters of butter, water 1 kg beef i'm talking about so how what do you mean by that that means these are the virtual water which was used to process them feed them and all those things so in that case if we are consider if we are exporting our food okay. items naturally we are exporting our water also so rather than producing those those food we should import food okay to save water this is one logic but the other logic says that India is a mostly agricultural countries, country, right? Most of the population depend on, on food production. So if we don't imp uh, produce food, what will they do? Right? And imported food is going to be very expensive. So in that case, food production cannot be stopped. So if we are producing food, that means we are consuming more water. All right. And the way we are producing food with the modern technology, let's like say the, the, the green revolution, more fertilizer, pesticides and all these things. Naturally, we are harming the other other species also. So that's one thing. Further, it says the example of such species are black buck, crocodile, Indian wild ass, uh, Indian rhino, lion, tailed uh, macaque, and uh, sangai. Uh, that is bro and deer in manipur and these are the some so, so whatever is the you can say uh, easy name you must memorize let's say uh, crocodile black buck okay indian wild ass then uh, indian rhino lion and all these things of course we can memorize these things okay so these are the endangered species that means if we if we keep uh, uh, doing the activities or the economic or you can say uh, uh, modern activities these things will be in danger of extinction now it says vulnerable species okay so what is this so these are the species whose population has declined to a level from where it is likely to move into endangered category in the near future if the negative factors continue to operate okay so that says that these are the, the number has declined so uh, much that they can be any time they can be extinct 
okay or endangered category if we do not uh, take care now okay so if the negative factor continues to operate this will happen so the example of such species are blue sheep asiatic elephant and the the gangetic uh, dolphin okay so these are some of this of course in in ganga river also we have dolphins but because of the the fish fishing and uh, uh, dolphins are caught and uh, eventually what happens that they die they die the the fishermen do not release them immediately into she has medicine medicine what happened an inflammation of hello yes hmm okay so that was vulnerable species now uh, so i now i read uh, rare species so what is that a spe species with small population may move into endangered or vulnerable category if the negative factors affecting them continue to operate the examples of such species are himalayan brown bear wild asiatic buffaloes desert fox and hornbill now try to understand rare species they are already in small population okay they in 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 the evolution time also they did not have a uh, uh, big number right and because of our the negative factors affecting them if that go on this will they will also uh, be you know endangered or you can say extinct so this is what is the rare species because you see in certain countries or certain areas like yak yak y a k yak okay we don't find everywhere okay so they are rare or you can say in certain areas only they are found as in the beginning of the chapter it says that we don't find all the animal or the species everywhere right so asiatic buffalo desert fox and hornbill brown bear himalayan brown bear these are found in that pocket of the 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 you can say area or the region only so if uh, uh, they are hunted because of the skin or because of uh, any other things they will be also extinct further it says endemic species these are the species which are only found in some particular areas usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers example of such species are the andaman teal nicobar pigeon andaman wild pig and uh, mithun in arunachal pradesh okay so these are some so they are found only in that area like say panda panda was on the verge of extinction or you can say it was all, almost extinct right but because of the conservations and and, and a lot of scientific care and all now china has enough panda or you, that is why you can see they are supplying in other countries you also right in you know you also i saw panda okay two pandas i saw there uh, in in uh, tokyo area so uh, that shows what that uh, of course uh, this is because of the utmost uh, uh, conservation and the scientific uh, programs for to, to for uh, further breeding now we have stable you can say uh, number of panda that is there okay so it does, this book doesn't talk about panda but uh, you can write the example but mostly since it is an indian syllabus so if you write more about indian example that's better but of course panda is the most suitable example here also okay so endemic means a particular place what is mithun mithun is i think a kind of uh, what do you say um, ox type ox kind of yeah okay uh, it's ox okay uh, as far as i know i might be wrong but i will check okay extinct species the last one you say these are the species which are not found after searches of known or or uh, likely areas where they may occur a species may be extinct from a local area a region or a country or continent or on the entire earth example of such species are the asiatic cheetah pink head duck okay so those are almost gone all right so we don't find these these one here like white white tiger white tiger almost gone so maybe one or two we have uh, otherwise mostly gone right if the glacier melt or you can say if the arctic uh, uh, ocean melts then uh, the the you can say the white bear the polar bear will also be gone who knows 
right so these are some of the endangered you can say if you talk about the goal uh, in the global perspective you can see that there are many animals which may which may be extinct okay so some are vulnerable or you can say in in the in danger right but of course uh, many many animals have already uh, you know uh, become extinct so this uh, now is uh, for asiatic cheetah it says what they are where did they go so the world fastest land mammal fastest the cheetah uh, you know the, the scientific name is given that you do not need to memorize is a unique and specialized member of the cat family and can move at the speed of 112 km per hour okay but uh, they they run at this speed for a few seconds okay because they are not uh, you can say uh, a machine that they they basically uh, run for uh, their yeah, for hunting right so a few seconds maybe around 10 15 or 20 seconds max to max okay that much but yes at that time they gain that much speed so that's why they are the fastest one the cheetah is often mistaken for uh, mistaken for a leopard its uh, distinguished marks are along the teardrop shaped lines on each side of the nose from the corner of its eyes to its mouth so that is their uh, main you can say identification that from uh, one uh, you can say from the corner of their eyes there is a black mark okay that goes until their mouth so that is the asiatic cheetah so that is almost gone uh, prior to the 20th century cheetahs were widely distributed through africa and asia today the asiatic cheetah is nearly extinct due to the decline of available habitat and prey the species was declared extinct in india long back in 1952 now just go back to grade 9 in grade 9 uh, there was one uh, what do you say one chapter uh, agriculture and forest society or something was the name of the chapter the second or third chapter there you might have studied that the Brit the britishers we didn't do the chapter oh you did not do the chapter that's a problem that's why there is you know in cbse what happens that they simply uh, just uh, cut the chapter that means you don't have to do but they do not understand that there is a link between all the, the chapters so if you don't understand or if you have not read that one there will be a problem to understand this chapter because uh, it is just like you know if you have not studied uh, the french revolution you cannot understand the national uh, nationalism in europe okay it was like that anyway so that time the britishers used to hunt the because that was the only means of entertainment for them so hundreds and thousands of cheetahs and the tigers or the, uh, the animals from the cat family were hunted by them okay and the book says that more than 120000 120,000 these cat family were uh, hunted by them okay and they had the pride to to take pictures uh, you know having their foot on the on the on the these animals dead animals right so do you can understand that how widely and they used to understand that these are the animals uh, uh savage animals and that shows that the barbaric society of india so these animals must be killed okay so that the savage society india has because of the forest and because of these animals okay so if you want to make india uh, uh, you can say a civilized society you have to kill these 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 animals and the scientific forestry started this all these things in grade 9 book okay anyway so thanks to them because see in 1952 we declared that this is gone this this animal has become extinct thanks to the britishers right because they killed most of the animals in india all right and the kings our kings they also used to feel very pr uh, proud of uh, killing these many animals and because of lack of awareness and lack of these uh, food chain and other things all gone okay so this happened so it says here what are the negative factors that cause such fearful depletion of the flora and fauna so this is one question so what are the negative factors the modernization increasing population industrialization urbanization because of these things these uh, animals are uh, or you can say the flora and fauna are dying okay further it says if you look around you will be able to find out how uh, we have transformed nature into 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 a resource obtaining directly or indirectly from the forest and wildlife so you have to understand that uh, uh, 
we have transformed nature into a resource obtaining directly or indirectly from the forest and wildlife that means we have uh, because of the human uh, environment or because of the human intervention the natural forest so you can say the primary and second primary forest has been cut and the secondary forest has been started do you do you remember primary and secondary forest primary forest means no primary forest means natural forest okay which which grew naturally and that remained for uh, many many thousands of years and so right secondary forest means the forest the primary forest has been cut and a specific type of plants were uh, were planted over there for the commercial benefit all right so let's say if you are if you fly over malaysia or you can say thailand you will find that lot of lot and lot of land has been converted into a secondary forest let's say for palm trees and for rubber tree okay i saw in the in thailand and in malaysia that those everywhere wherever you go near the cities or you can say the highways the the primary forest has been cut and the rubber and palm tree have been have been uh, you know planted over there by why because the commercial benefits okay so because of the human intervention uh, these things uh, are happening and now just understand that a primary forest has a lot of species okay in a typical rain forest area in a square kilometer you have more than 300 species of flora and fauna 300 more uh, species of flora and fauna in one square kilometer right but when you cut that forest and you you convert into a secondary forest you have a particular type of tree everywhere let's say uh, let's say palm or let's say rubber okay or eucalyptus and all these things right so in that case not and, and the forest floor is clear because you are doing commercial cultivation or commercial uh, forestry so in that case you need uh, the security guards and your vehicle should go into to get the the product from the the forest so in that case the forest floor is almost clear that means no shrubs no herbs nothing is growing over there right no fun nothing climbers and creepers nothing so in that case what happens that small animals or small insects or the organism cannot survive in that okay so all these things are happening because of our rising demands of our ever increasing wants not the needs right so because of that this is happening so further it says that wood box leaves rubber medicines dyes food fuel fodder manure etc these are the things we need from forest okay remember these things so don't write one or two right try to write as many as possible so wood box leaves rubber medicines dyes food fuel fodder uh, man, uh, manure etc so it is it is we ourselves who have depleted our forest and while i've just consider one case that the britishers or you can say the europeans uh, invented motor car and other vehicles and all these are so the modern means of transportation right but you just try to understand that they did not have uh, rubber plantation in in america or they did not have rubber plantation in in uh, in europe right but they invented uh, cars and they that needed tires and tire will come from where the rubber because that cannot run on on the metal uh, wheel or you can say the wooden wheel so rubber was needed right and where was rubber found rubber was found in the tropical areas right so for those commercial gains we became their colonies or they colonized us right and after that reckless deforestation and exploitation of forest took place and in india if you remember you don't remember grade 9 book uh, because of that they cut uh, you can say uh, millions and millions of acres of land throughout asia and uh, the forest i'm talking about the primary forest and they converted into secondary forest for their commercial gains right so it is us who who created this problem so the greatest damage inflicted on indian forest was due to the colonial period finally it comes here okay as a flash point of grade 9 the colonial period due to the expansion of railways agriculture commercial and scientific forestry and mining activities so when you let's say start a mining activity anywhere in the world right the first thing what you do is that you clear the forest right in amazon what happens same thing in india in chotanagpur area or wherever we have the minerals what we do is because you have to dig the, dig the soil right so if you are digging the earth what will happen the first thing what you are going to do is that you are going to clear that area right that means all the plants and herbs and the shrubs everything is gone 
right so because of that the 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 animals which survive on that they are gone so this is one one of the things even after independence agricultural expansion continues to be one of the major causes of depletion of forest resources so when we got independence we had around 300 million population in india right and we were star we were starving we did not have enough food so in 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 few uh, in in the initial years we used to get substandard food from america you can say the wheat we used to get wheat from america right and because of that we had to compromise with you can say our national integrity and sovereignty and all these things in terms of uh, you can say pakistan and other things so that was happening so because of india being a very uh, a poor country and a hungry country we had uh, only the first objective was to to feed the the indians right okay because three times food was very much required then only we can think about other other development so the first five year plan which started in 1951 okay was more emphasized on agriculture production that means sir what is scientific forestry scientific forestry means that you have to have one cup uh, first of all cut the primary forest all the unnecessary trees and and you uh, you can say uh, uh, grow uh, plant particular type of plants which are expensive in the market okay which gives you durable wood okay and that should be in a particular row that means row wise right and there should be enough gap between two plants so that they can move their vehicles and all these things because these trees let's say go 20 meters 30 meters high okay and they have they have a, a, a meter of circumference that means they are quite big right in that case when you cut down those trees how are you going to bring from that that tree or you can say the wood or the log from the interior part of the the, the forest to the road or you can say the to the transport so you have to have your truck inside that one right or the trucks and the other like you can say whatever uh, transport system that time and uh, we were using right the bullock carts and all okay or elephants and all these things so you need enough space between the two trees that means that means we just consider that you have a narrow road and uh, both the sides of the road you have trees in that case something okay number one second one is that if you have plants or the trees in a row or you can say in rows then it will be easy to <coughs> To, to look after those things that means the forest guard can in one corner if they stand they can fire they, they can they can see in kilometers why because the trees are not obstructing the the views right because they are in a particular row okay in one row row wise they are there so you can have the diagonal or you can say uh, you know in a square or rectangular uh, area so there you can see far and wide number one plus they in scientific forestry uh, we started tall trees okay we emphasize on the trees which are a hardwood number one and they go grow taller not wider not like sakura tree okay so the the you can say the tra tall trees why because that those wood were needed for ship building those woods were needed for railway sleepers you understand the meaning of sleepers that means the between two tracks the the metal tracks you have a connecting uh, you can say uh, you know wooden plank Okay, now we are using uh, the the concrete one because of the not having enough uh, this thing, but uh, that was used. So for the sleepers, you needed uh, tall trees, or you can say the straight wood. And straight wood we, uh, you can get only from the tall trees. That is why all those trees which were very very important for ecological balance, okay, those were cut and scientific trees were uh, uh, were planted. That means they go straight hardwood and they yield more uh, more number of uh, amount of wood right so that was the the scientific forestry all right okay so even after independence the agricultural expansion continued to be one of the major causes of depletion of forest resources between 1951 and 1980 according to the forest survey of india over 26200 square kilometer of forest area was converted into agricultural land all of india you can say 26200 square kilometers such a big area okay was converted substantial parts of tribal belts especially in the north eastern and central india have been deforested or degraded by shifting cultivation okay a type of slash and burn, burn agriculture you might be knowing about shifting cultivation do you understand that 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. Shifting cultivation means uh, uh, that means in one patch of land, the the tribal people uh, do the farming. Okay, they cut that 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 uh, the tree over there. They do the farming. They stay there for three four years. Okay, and when the soil is now infertile, they leave the area and they go to they move to another area. <coughs> Sorry, they may come back at the same patch of land again, maybe after 20, 30 years. So because of the slash and burn, uh, uh, the forest fire and other things, now it is mostly banned in India because we do not have that kind of tribal system where slash and burn uh, takes place. But of course, in some parts of Indonesia and in Amazon, it takes place because they have rainforest and uh, still uh, some of the areas are inaccessible for the common people in both the countries because tribals are there and uh, around 50 years ago they were the you can say what do you say mm. uh, those who eat uh, human being what is that called cannibals Cannibal. yeah cannibalism was there in indonesia around uh, 30 40 years ago also okay because they are so remote and so uh, you can say uh, deep area that hardly people used to go that means the tribals used to live so cannibalism was very uh, common there uh, so that one so a, a similar thing you find uh, you, um, you may find in amazon also right so those things were there so the slash and burn agriculture used to take place there now now in india of course it is not there because of the, the uh, you know forest fire and other modern things and all these things it is almost gone okay are coronial forest policies to be blamed yes we were talking about that so it says some of our environmental activists say that uh, <clears throat> the promotion of a few favored species in many parts of india has been carried through the ironically termed enrichment plantation or you can say scientific uh, forestry in which a single commercially valuable species was extensively planted and other species eliminated this is what i told you for this this was in grade nine okay for instance teak monoculture wa has damaged the natural forest in south india and chair pine the pinus rocks burghi plantation in the himalayas have replaced the himalayan oak right okay so this is the scientific forestry that means for the ship building for durable uh, material or the wood they cut other plants like mahua people neem and all these things they cut over there the bushes and all and they planted only one kind of tree right and, and because of that of course this happened and since the britishers lived in india or you can say they ruled india for 190 years so that was enough time they had to completely destroy the ecosystem here okay so ecosystem was completely gone thanks to them okay because they did this this for their you can say uh, their commercial benefits okay and this is how they exploited the flora and fauna in india and uh, damaged also badly <clears throat> all right next is the large scale development projects have also contributed significantly to the loss of forest naturally any country needs first thing is development right development takes place at the cost of you can say the natural uh, natural you know degradation so uh, the what is the opportunity cost of uh, development the opportunity cost of development is uh, the degradation of forest or you can say the flora and fauna because you can if you want to have more and more forest you cannot have that much uh, um, uh, development right uh, where you live in yokohama just consider that uh, around 50 60 years ago what kind what kind of uh, area that might be i told you earlier also this may be uh, uh, you can say forest area uh, you can say 150 years or 100 years ago uh, yokohama was a, a fishing village yokohama was a fishing village and village cannot survive without forest right okay and now you see yokohama where is the village all village gone Right. So if you if you read the history of Yokohama or you can say the Tokyo area, Tokyo Bay and all these things, that means it was completely under forest once upon a time and gradually people started clearing those forests. Right. And Yokohama is now the world class city. Tokyo is the world class city now. Right. This is how it happens. So because of the development, it takes place. The similar thing in India also, because in 1946 or in 1940s, uh, much of Delhi was under forest. Right. And uh, once I was reading a book from a famous uh, writer that was Kushwan Singh. Uh, he he owned a cinema hall in in Karnat Place. You know, one of the heart of the you can say the heart of Delhi uh, city, right? And there he used to uh, take people for free 
so that they should develop the habit of watching movies right and people did not want to go there why because of the forest area that was on the way there was there used to be forest so people of course naturally they will not like to walk in the forest at night right so the buses were uh, plied for there and started so that people should come and go safely so this was this was the condition but of course population started increasing people needed more land for various uh, you can say activities like schools hospitals mega cities big cities urbanization so these are the the sign of development and because of that also this happened the deforestation took place further industrial uh, industrial uh, production had to start and for industry you need minerals where are the minerals minerals are buried under the soil or you can say under the forest right so you have to cut the forest another problem so further de degradation or you can say uh, you can say deforestation took place right because of the increasing population and population explosion which took place sometimes in 17 and 1970 and in, 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 in 80 right india needed more uh, land for uh, you can say agricultural production <coughs> So further uh, deforestation took place. So these are you can say then transport uh, way, transport then industries then you can say um, hydroelectric dams. All these you know the modern symbols of you can say the symbols of modernization of course had a, a big toll on on the natural resources and that this is how the degradation or you can say the deforestation of uh, took place over there. So it says the clearing of forests is still continuing in the, with the projects like Narmada Sagar project in Madhya Pradesh, which would inundate 40,000 hectares of forest. Okay, one hectare means how many how many meters? <clears throat> 100 times 100. 10,000. Higher, yeah, 10,000 meters square, right? So you can say 40,000 hectares of forest, you can understand that how big the area might be. So mining is another important factor behind deforestation. So these are some of the factors. Please remember these things. Mining is one factor. Then agriculture is another factor. Then modernization is another factor. That means urbanization is one another factor. Uh, hydroelectric dams are there because see, where, 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 where do we make dams? Where do we construct dams? We build dams where we have the both the sites. We have hills or the river flow over there. So we we put a barrier or you can say we construct a wall and the water uh, you know uh, stays behind the wall and that starts going up and up and back because of the back water it will it will submerge more and more area. That means a forest will be permanently underwater. Okay, that way. So naturally when the forest is under water what will happen to the animals right though so they will also be gone and what will happen to the people who are living in those uh, those forests or in those villages near the forest right so they had to be displaced so hydroelectric dams have you can say both the negative and the positive points they have they are cleaner energy fine but you have we have to understand that how much loss or you can say ecological loss they incur uh, that also we will study in i think in the following uh, chapter so the buxa tiger reserve in west bengal is seriously threatened by the ongoing dolomite mining okay this dolomite is used for what any idea no sir no okay let me check dolomite dolomite is used for wait a minute wait a minute dolomite <coughs> D O L O M I T Dolomite is used for hmm. magnesium. Okay, we get magnesium from that. Dolomite is used as a source of magnesium metal and of course magnesia which is constituent of refractory bricks. Okay, so magnesium we extract from there and okay, so for that purpose and uh, you know the importance of magnesium in industries so because of that buxa tiger reserve is in in danger so remember this here uh, uh, what is the name of the tiger reserve which is in uh, west bengal that is buxa right why buxa tiger reserve is under threat because of the dolomite mining okay uh, two questions it has disturbed the natural habitat of many species and blocked the migration route of several others. So you know what happens these days, uh, what what uh, uh, you can say solution we have started uh, getting of that, 
that we make the pathway or you can say underpass for the forest that means suppose there is a flyover there is a road or expressway constructed in the middle of the forest right so in that case what happens that the animals cannot uh, cross the road or in in that course of crossing the road they they get killed right number one so what we have done is that we are making underpass for them so that means in many areas we have made the flyovers so that uh, the vehicle will uh, move on the flyover right and and below that or you can say under the flyover the the animals can move from this part of the the, the forest to other part of the forest okay so this i have seen in dehradun also uh, many uh, underpass have been built uh, because of the the movement of the leopards and other other animals okay so this, that is why it says the block the migration route of several others uh, including the great indian elephants so because of the underpass now they are able to move okay so this is one thing that that time we did not think so much because and because of that this happened okay when well, next page says that many foresters and environmentalists hold the view that the greatest degrading factors behind the depletion of forest resources are grazing and fuel wood collection so because of that what happens that you need uh, you can say the forest to be cleared and the grazing land should be there and the fuel wood collection for that also they cut the trees so this is also one of the reasons though there may be some substance in their argument yet the fact remains that the substantial part of the fuel fodder demand is met by looping uh, lopping rather than by felling uh, tree uh, the entire tree so uh, naturally see in ancient time also in medieval time also when we did not have petroleum or we did not have lpg that time how people were surviving they you they had a very good a delicate balance between the nature and their their, their demands or you can say their needs right so they used to to cut the trees or you can say the branches which were already dried not the entire entire tree okay so the 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 fodder or you can say the fuel uh, uh, for fuel they they used to collect that dried wood not the entire tree so this this argument does not hold much here okay so but anyway this is also one of the reasons uh, the forest ecosystem was re repository of some of the country's most valuable forest products minerals and other resources that met the demand of rapidly expanding industrial urban economy these protected areas thus means different things to different people and therein lies in the fertile ground of conflicts so <clears throat> uh, industries want to have more minerals the tribals want to have more forest and the minerals are buried under the forest so in that case that becomes a breeding ground of you can say the conflicts okay or uh, uh, the tribals uh, you know uh, you can say stays their protest and all these things over there that this forest is should be declared a reserve forest or protected national park so that no mining activity and no other activity commercial activity should take place in this these areas right so this becomes uh, you can say a conflicting zone for both the uh, the aspirants of various uh, you can say needs okay next is the himalayan you in trouble what is that the himalayan you that, that means texas valanchina chiana is a medicinal plant found in various parts of himachal pradesh and arunachal pradesh a chemical compound called called taxol is extracted from the bark needles twigs and roots of this tree and it has been successfully used to treat some cancers now understand this one that they they are the cancer kind of uh, uh, you can say cancer t treatment that uh, that plant works for cancer treatment so the drug is now the biggest selling anti cancer drug in the world the species is under great threat threat due to the over exploitation now you see the cancer is another you can say uh, a big disease in the world right because of the various things and this this plant is under huge demand right and because of that it is in uh, uh, you know in danger now in the last one decade thousands of yew trees so it's a tree have dried up in various part in himachal pradesh and arunachal pradesh right and these are being used for you can say cancer treatment so in that case you can understand that if you want to treat the cancer payment uh, patient 
naturally uh, you have to cut this tree right and then naturally the system will be disrupted habitat destruction hunting poaching over exploitation environmental pollution poisoning and forest fires are factors which have led to the decline in uh, indian uh, biodiversity so this much is for one mark question okay further if you go you can write in three marks and if you want to write if this question comes of five marks because the the value based question will be also there right so in value based questions so you have to explain uh, you know uh, in detail other important causes of environmental destructions are unequal access inequitable consumption of resources and differential sharing of responsibility of environmental well being okay so this is also because nobody wants to take responsibility of you know uh, fixing the things today also what happens in the whole world america china india brazil and uh, japan and other countries when they sit for climate uh, talks right america says that india and china are the most polluted country in the world they they produce a lot of carbon dioxide so they should they should limit the the you can say uh, production of carbon dioxide that means they should not pollute the environment right this is one thing and we say what that we are the developing countries right and uh, uh, the most polluted uh, the pollutant country is uh, you can say the contributor of pollution is america because most of the industrial activities take place there so that is the developed country so they should first uh, take a step on that so there is a conflict between you can say uh, the western world and the eastern world right so they say that you should uh, stop activities the because you pollute a lot and we say that you should stop because you have already polluted a lot right Ah, okay okay so overpopulation in third world countries you understand the meaning of third world countries the our countries okay that means uh, those countries which got independence after second world war they are called third world countries so overpopulation in third world countries is often cited as the cause of environmental degradation why do we have uh, overpopulation too much of population <clears throat> people used to be uneducated about family planning okay what else they wanted more people to work what what kind of in the fields yes, and stuff yes yes third world countries got uh, you know the, the, uh, independence later after second world war right they were mostly the backward countries and they were mostly the agricultural countries and in agriculture you need more human hands right more hands are needed more labor is needed right and because of being poor countries we were not able to or all the third world countries were not able to to use uh, you can say what uh, the machinery so in that case uh, we needed more uh, more uh, human being right so we produced more and because of that we are overpopulated thank god so however an average american consumes 40 times more resources than an average somalian right you know somalia where somalia is the horn country in africa okay so 40 times more uh, resources they use naturally so when you talk about resources think about the land resource the water then electricity then food and the the car and all the things if you talk about an average american and uh, let's say any any person who is in developed country right so they use more resources than a poor country like somalia or chad or you can say uh, bangladesh similarly the richest 5% of indian society probably cause more ecological damage because of the amount they consume than than the the poorest 25% see the amount of resources you consume that means you are polluting more you are running uh, you have fridge you have uh, air conditioners you have cars you have so many things you have washing machine you have are please you have uh, washing machines detergent many other things we are using which the other people don't use right so in that case this is how we are consuming more resources and and we are blaming them okay so you can see the the 5% of the indian society uh, mostly consume more than the 25% of the poor uh, people so the former share that is the 5% mean uh, minimum shares minimum uh, responsibilities for environmental well being because we don't care okay i have my own car i have this and that okay i have the full right because i have money i have the full right to to pollute the environment so this question is who is consuming what from where and how much right so if we talk about that then we will find that uh, 
uh, the the rich countries the developed countries are polluting more this is what i told you that uh, there is a conflict between uh, india and america and china and other con developed countries because we understand that europe has polluted already environment a lot america has already polluted environment right so when they, they are trying to control us that means they want to sell their product in our country right we will become their market we cannot uh, produce our own things at the cheapest uh, level right and we will be we, uh, we will become their market and they will they will uh, further uh, exploit us so uh, around you can say 50 60 years ago we got rid of uh, you can say the britishers because they were uh, physically present in india right and they were exploiting our resources and uh, exploited the country now this is the neo neo colonization that means they will not physically come to your country and control you they will push their product in your market and your domestic uh, production will not compete with their high level production and eventually your domestic uh, production will die down and you will buy buy their 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 items and they will make money this is what is happening these days also okay everybody uses apple phone okay where is where does the money go right everybody uses all the coke pepsi blah blah so many things okay mcdonald's subway or this way that way my way your way all are the american products right and we are uh, happy to consume that and money goes there all right so this is a kind of neo colonialism started that means physically we will not come to fight and have uh, control you we will control your market we will control your government okay we will exploit your government your government has to compromise right so whenever uh, developing country need any kind of uh, financial assistance or technical assistance they they put a condition that at what condition you have to open your market why to open my market open your education market open your insurance market that means you indians don't have insurance so our our companies will operate here for insurance and they will make uh, they will insure people uh, insurance will be, uh, take place and we will make money out of that this is one thing right because insurance if i have a medical insurance i don't uh, fall sick every day right but i am paying medical bill medical insurance every year here you can see in japan what we are we doing we are paying a huge medical insurance bill right but do we fall sick every day every time no but we understand that okay if any 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 bad day if we if we fall sick or something okay all the saving will be gone in japan so better to have the medical insurance and it is mandatory here right so what is, where is this money going on going this money is going to the government or maybe the private companies right so this is how they are they are trying to control our finances and uh, and you just understand that how can i how can i believe a a, a company uh, and i can give and trust my life in their hands if i do not know them right but this is happening so they put a condition that you have to open your insurance sector you have to open your health sector that means foreign companies or foreign hospitals will operate in your country right and they will they will charge whatever they want right and you have no option but Uh, for a better treatment and better medical advice and all these things you have to pay a lot of money so uh, we are we are we are consuming their products we are consuming their services and they are making money eventually all right okay so this is i leave you here and okay let me just complete this paragraph after that i will leave you for the uh, before the next topic so further it says the destruction of forest and wildlife is not just a biological issue the biological loss is strongly correlated with the loss of the cultural diversity such losses have increasingly marginalized and improvised uh many indigenous and other forest dependent com communities who directly depend on uh who directly depend on various components of forest and wildlife or food because see uh, w w tribals in the forest okay they have been marginalized nobody cares for them so when tehri dam was uh, uh tehri dam started let's say the entire big city of tehri then many thousands of villages those were completely underwater okay when the three gorges dam in china three gorges dam in china the biggest dam in the world right okay when that started thousands and thousands of villages hundreds of cities are now completely under water you can you can check on internet also right so those cities which were high, uh, having many houses high rises they are completely under water now why because uh, country needs energy right and the yangtze river huanghe or all these rivers uh, uh, now you know uh, producing a lot of electricity and that this is how the china is running all right so as these resources are depleted the drudgery of women increases and uh, sometimes they have to walk for more than 10 kilometers to collect the resources 
दिस कॉज इज सीरियस हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम फॉर वुमेन एंड नेग्लिजेंस ऑफ होम एंड चिल्ड्रेन बिकॉज ऑफ द इनक्रीज हाउस ऑफ वर्क which often has serious social implications so now see we are not talking about the so uh, the ecological or the biological or the scientific thing we have to see that because of the ecological ecological degradation social fabric also has uh, has been has been disturbed or you can say the social system has uh, degraded because the women are walking 10 kilometers and to fetch a few liters of water right because the water scarcity i told you right <coughs> so they are not able to take care of children the family their their health also the negative impact on on their health also that is also one thing the indirect impact of degradation of such a severe drought such as, such as severe drought or deforestation induced floods etc also hit the poor of the hardest because the uh, not having uh, forest cover will make the surface run off very fast and because of that the river will uh, be flooded and the nearby area will also be flooded if you have a lot of forest the roots will uh, absorb water and because with the help of the roots much of the water goes down in the water table but since you do not have forest whenever it rains there will be a huge surface runoff and eventually the 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 river will be flooded right and that is called flash flood okay and that takes place and because of that the poor people are the the hardest hit community in the society so poverty in these cases is a direct outcome of the environmental degradation or destruction therefore forest and wildlife are vital to the quality of life and environment in subcontinent and it is imperative to adapt to sound forest and wildlife conservation strategies that means everybody has to be sentimental or you can say sensitive about it everybody has to consider this as a serious issue right and we have to understand that we are not only people in the in the society other poor people are also the part of the society and they are equally important and we have to think about them also with this i leave you now okay and uh, in the next class we will start and now i have uh, some questions on the previous chapter in history okay that means the nationalism in india i am going to just uh, uh, paste on this messenger the uh, the skype messenger right and you can check those questions all right <clears throat> hello yes okay. sir okay so i leave you now all right bye bye good night it's 9:43 good night okay, sir okay good night bye bye See you next week